students today I, we are going to talk about the dynamic programming uh, which is a component in unit number three and I'm going to cover the dynamic programming in two parts the first part will include one application and the basics of dynamic programming uh, followed by the second one which will include a few applications on dynamic programming so let's understand what is a dynamic programming so if I go with the proverb and the literature I would say that it is very much relevant with the phrase that those who do not remember the past condemn to repeat it so it means if I try to build a solution and if I try to uh, try to learn that what solutions do not work for a particular problem possibly I won't repeat it so this is what the dynamic programming strategy is so let's see the perspective of dynamic programming it is an optimization technique first of all so and it solves the problem by breaking it down into the simpler sub problems here if you see what is important here that uh, the problems are the problems are being broken into smaller and the simpler sub problems and the optimal solution to the overall problem depends on the optimal solution to its sub problems so this is one thing which is important to learn that uh, like divide and conquer approach we are again going to break down the problem into the sub problems so let with this let's try to understand the elements of dynamic programming so there are two major components the one is the optimal substructure and the other one is the overlapping sub problems so let's see uh, what is the optimal substructure first so an optimal solution to a problem contains within it an optimal solution to sub problems it means if we are looking for an optimal solution for an entire problem for each sub problem we should design a optimal solution okay and the second thing optimal solution to the entire problem is built up in a bottom to top fashion so it means the sub problem first of all should have a optimal solutions and then we should gradually merge them in order to build a tree kind of a structure so that we can get optimal solution towards the top of the tree then the second uh, component which is of dynamic programming is a overlapping sub problems so overlapping sub problem means like recursive algorithm revisits the same sub problem over and over like calculating a Fibonacci number of Fibonacci series so it means if we am I am going to compute something uh, a Fibonacci number f5 or I am going to compute it f4 possibly I will have to repeat the same exercise again and again so the problem must have a overlapping sub problems uh, with this uh, the basic principle what each and every dynamic programming the, the entire dynamic programming strategy follows and each and every application of the dynamic programming works on the principle of optimality so the principle of optimality says that if the sub solution of an optimal solution are optimal solution for their sub problems what does it mean if a problem is being divided into number of sub problems like this and if each of this sub problem each of this sub problem can be solved in suboptimal time or suboptimal solution then it means the it will lead to a, again a optimal solution it will again lead to optimal solution and hence we can design our overall solution as an optimal solution okay so like if I talk about a shortest prob problem you all of you know that we have uh, the very famous Dijkstra's algorithm for finding our shortest path so what you do you always try to calculate a shortest path between two nodes right and then you keep on merging the shortest path between two nodes until there is no node left or you do not form a cycle in that case if you see the shortest path problem always is solved by using a shortest path in the graph so you don't get a one or two or three solutions you always come to one solution only so this is one problem which is supposed to be a uh, which is supposed to follow a principle of optimality and uh, in every situation you get an optimal solution but if I try to talk about a longest path problem possibly you can start with one node to the other node and the other node to the other node and you can keep on repeating in the cycle no matters how many times because the optimal solution does not exist here because it the form forming of a formation of a cycle will never give you a optimal solution so henceforth longest path problem does not follow the principle of optimality but the shortest path problem does now 
the important part is that how to design a dynamic problem solution so what we have to do there are only four basic parts of designing a dynamic problem solution first of all characterize the structure of an optimal solution so how do you want to make it then you have to recursively define the value of an optimal solution then compute the value of an optimal solution in a bottom up fashion remember bottom up fashion and then construct an optimal solution from the computed information so we will gradually come to these four points gradually we will come to that points when we will solving a particular application now we have two important points here one is a memo memoization the other one is a tabulation the uh, dynamic programming works on a principle of tabulation where each and every solution of a sub problem is tabulated tabulated means in the form of table or in the form of matrix you try to uh, store the solution and then you try to see a best or the most optimal solution for a particular sub problem and that's how at every step you keep on recording number of solutions and then you pick Opti most optimal solution at that particular moment of time and then this is that's how you keep on building a optimal solution to the overall problem but when there is one more concept of memoization here memoization uh, just works in a reverse order of uh, tabulation in tabulation here also we have to maintain a table with a sub problem solution okay so and like memoize recursive algorithm maintains an entry in a table for the solution to each sub problem uh, the only difference between tabulation and memoization is that the memoization works from top to bottom approach and the tabulation works from bottom to up approach okay now before coming to the application of dynamic programming I would like to do give you a brief uh, comparison between the dynamic programming and greedy algorithm so as we have already covered the greedy algorithm unit number one all of you know that uh, greedy method computes its solution by making its choices in a serial forward fashion so once you have picked up the choice even in the fractional abstract problem or in the shortest path problem once you have cho chosen a solution you cannot change your choice right you cannot go back so this is what the greedy algorithm is but in dynamic programming we compute each and every solution we try to uh, synthesize uh, the bottom of solutions uh, from each sub problem and we try with all the other possible opportunities and once we tabulate all the possible methods or all the possible solution we try to get the most optimal solution at a particular moment of time so that's one difference the other one that there is a there is no uh, test there is no hard and fast rule by which I can tell you or by which anyone can tell you that the greedy method is going to give you an optimal solution the most optimal solution but in dynamic programming always the solutions follow the principle of optimality and henceforth whatever solution you get this is going to be always a most optimal solution similarly we have a, a very small and the little uh, comparison before uh, between the dynamic programming and the divide and conquer algorithm so though uh, you must be surprised that dynamic programming also breaks the problem into various sub problems and try to devise a solution for each of the sub problem and that's what the divide and conquer strategy also does then what's the difference so you remember that in the divide and conquer approach the split occurs at the pre-specified deterministic point like if i am going to sort an array from 1 to n i am going to partition it from n by 2 then I'm going to follow this strategy for the left part also and for the right part also so further I will divide it by n by 4 and this side also I am going to divide it by n by 4 right so these are the pre specified deterministic point but in dynamic programming these points cannot be predefined so I cannot say that uh, the problem is going to be uh, splitted from the median of it only okay so uh, this is quite possible that problem starts from here and then gradually goes to this point and then gradually goes to this point and then gradually goes to this point so this is all possible it could be n by 8 n by 8 this could be n by 6 this could be n by 3 right so the it the inputs are uh, splitted at every possible points okay and then when we split it at all the points we try to see that which point is giving us the most optimal solution so that's the difference between the divide and conquer approach and the dynamic programming approach 
now a very uh, small uh, uh, a problem of uh, calculating a combination you know that nck okay and that can be calculated by uh, writing this particular formula and with the a uh, base condition or the root condition that you know that uh, how many combinations are possible of picking a particular item from the given n number of items there is only one way right and uh, how many combinations are possible if we have n number of items and we have to pick n objects so obviously there are there is only one one to one uh, combination is possible so divide and conquer approach would repeatedly solve the common sub problem okay but dynamic programming solves each sub problem just once and stores the answer in a table so what we were talking about sub problems share the sub problems okay and they are not in independent now if you see here like we have to define uh, we have to calculate the combination between 6 and 4 then we can further write it like this so here we can see the lots of problems are overlapping sub problems right so this is what we see in the fabonicki series also in the combinations also where the problems are defined in the predefined intervals and we try to get solutions from each of the sub problem and we try to see which is giving us the most optimal solution okay so uh, dynamic programming is used for the optimization problem where we have to uh, make a set of choices and uh, uh, we have to see which is giving us the most optimal solution and the optimal value could be a minimum of it or the maximum of it depending on the type of the problem and there is a quite uh, there's a high possibility that a solution can lead to an optimal solution okay our multiple solution are leading to an optimal solution so with this uh, let me come quickly to a very um, important example uh, in your syllabus that is assembly line scheduling uh, so let me uh, let me give you a very uh, scenario of a automobile factory where a uh, uh, automobile factory where the chassis enters from one uh, door and uh, there are several stations on each of the assembly line and which are supposed to do a different job to a particular chassis which is entering like fitting the engine painting or doing the other things right so each station has been given a particular task now each station is has been given a particular task and the chases is entering from uh, the, this point left side you can see it is marked as E1 and the exit is uh, marked as X1 right and in between whatever stations have been given to you they are marked with the station uh, S stations have been uh, uh, in nomenclature they have been identified as station s now what is this one one uh, so each line has n number of stations s one one s one n okay so each line has n number of stations and we have uh, similarly we have two lines like that one and two now uh, one to n stations uh, are this the terminology which you can see here s one comma one is defining your the first i is referring to the assembly line number and the other number which is after the comma you can see it is mentioning your station number on that particular line okay then even is a time uh, so even is a time of entering the uh, chases to a particular line so even and e2 because we have two lines even is referring to the time uh, which will be taken by a particular chases to enter to the line one and e2 is the time when the chases enters to the line number two uh, we can see here uh, the x1 and x2 two more terms x1 is the exit time from line number one and x2 is the exit time from line number two okay so this is what uh, now you must be surprising that what is this t11 and t12 so let me tell you t if the if all of sudden our order comes where the automobile has to uh, complete a order in uh, very less time in that case the chases has to switch between the line number one and line number two ideally the once the chases enters to the particular line it follows the same line until the exit gates but in case if uh, it has to be the order has to be completed in hurry or in rush it can switch the stations between the lines and t is representing that time okay so t is representing a time here between the switching from stations to the one line to the other line if i say here t11 so what 11 is telling you one is like coming from line number one and the other one is a station one so coming from line number one station one and reaching to 
line number 2 station 2 similarly if you see here t21 t21 is telling you the second uh, line transit time from second line from the first station and it will be going to the second station on the first line okay so this is what this uh, the uh, algorithm diagram is and once we have entered to the through e once you have entered through this point you can either stay on the same line like this and then we are referring that this will cost us nothing right so if you're moving from one station to the other station on the same line the cost incurred between these two stations would be zero but if you take a transfer to the other line in case of some uh, requirement if you move from one line to the other line in that case you have to pay a transit cost tij okay where i is your as usual lines so how many similar lines you are having one and two and the other j is representing the station number so that could be one two three up to n minus one okay so what is the problem here the problem here is what station should be chosen from line one and which from line two in order to minimize the total time through the factory for one car so suppose we are entering from here okay and we chose how to choose the first line and second thing once we have chosen the line how to pick the stations from line number one and line number two in order to complete the entire order in the minimal time so that's what our objective is so using dynamic programming we are going to solve this problem so the one solution could be if you are choosing a particular line one or line two you can mark it zero or you can mark it with line number one okay so there's a brute force technique the brute force techniques that says that you enumerate all the possibility of selecting stations from line number one and line number two it means all the possible combinations and then try to see which is taking the least time so you have to compute that how long it takes in each case and choose the best one so how many paths are possible obviously if you see here from each station we can either to be on the same line or we can switch the line between uh, line number one and two so that's how we come to the two to the power of n but if n is going to be a large number uh, i would say that if n is going to be in, in thousand of terms you see this this term itself becomes too large to compute so again we come back to the question that how to compute the minimum time of going through a station from one line to the other line so let's let me uh, get the first uh, uh, how let let me design a first of all the structure of the optimal solution okay so let me see how we can design it so first of all if there is a line one where we have two stations on line number one this is station j and this is station j minus one okay this is a j minus one and j and this is a station two on line number two okay so if a chase is coming from line number one station number one it may go to same line that is a line number one and a station would be the next station so next station of j minus one would be j now not only this the chases may come from the station number j minus one of line two also right and what it will do it will take some cost transit cost that is t2 j minus one and it may also reach to s1 comma j so how many possibilities are there we have two choices right each station will be having two choices of having a chases first from its own line and second from the next line so now if we suppose that the fastest wave of reaching to s1 comma j is through a1 comma j minus 1 right so we have to check whether really it is a fastest way or this path is uh, the fastest one right so if there is a faster way through s1 j, j minus 1 we would use it instead and we will also compute it for s2 j minus 1 to just to see whether is this going to be a fastest path 
so this is what our optimal substructure is right so our optimal structure is telling us that you compute in between those be these two sub problems sub problems is what is the sub problem here sub problem here is to compute the time from coming from station j minus 1 from line number 1 to j or from line number 2 to j right to the station 1 so which is giving us the least time that is what our optimal solution would be so this is this becomes our optimal substructure okay so this is again so our optimal solution if we see the the find the fastest way the major problem has now been divided into sub problem and the sub problem is that for every station we have to find out if we have to reach to the gth station which is the fastest way either it is from j minus 1th station on the line 1 or it is from j minus 1th station on the line number 2 and this is what is known as our optimal substructure property and this property is used to construct an optimal solution to a problem from optimal solution to the sub problem okay so the second part of the dynamic programming application says that we have to devise a recursive solution okay it means the there has to be a solution which can be recursively applied to each and every sub problem so before coming to the recursive solution we will try to see some of these uh, terminology first of all we will take a term f star which is telling us the fastest time to get through the entire factory okay so no matter which line and which station but it is it it will give us the fastest uh, fastest uh, time then we have the other one is f i of j if you see i is a sub index here and j is the index so what is f i is telling it's a line number i is again a line number so it's a fastest time to get from the starting point through station i through station line station si comma j sorry so what is si comma j i is will be your line number and j will be your station number okay uh, i'll i'll uh, talk more about it once we will solve the numerical on it so how can we compute the fastest path so let's look at this diagram now so this diagram is telling us uh, if I enter from here and how many stations are there there are suppose n stations are there then the time taken by each of this station okay each station n on line number one or on the line number two so this is what it is okay the fastest time to reach to the station nth station through line number one or to reach the nth station on line number two okay plus what is plus here plus we have to take the cons we have to consider the time taken for the exit x1 and x2 so we have added if you are coming from line number one the x1 is exit time and if you are coming from line number 2 x2 is exit time so we have done that thing also so fastest way would give us the minimum between these two and that's what we have to calculate uh, in the recursive solution as you all of you know that recursive solution cannot work until we come to a base condition so what is the base condition is here base condition is here here is if you are on the first station okay j is equals to 1 i could be 1 or 2 it means j is a station number so the line the chases may enter from the first station of either line either line is either line number 1 or line number 2 so the time taken by the first station this is j so this is 1 and f1 means line number 1 so time taken by the station number 1 on line number 1 would be the time taken by the chases to enter onto the line that is e1 plus a11 what is a11 a11 is the time taken by a station number one on line number one so f1 of one becomes your e1 plus a11 similarly the time taken by station number one on line number two becomes your e2 plus a21 okay so time when the chase is enters that's the entry time plus a2 comma one that becomes your time taken by the station number one on line number two now the 
once we have defined our base cases we have to come to the general cases so general cases becomes when we have we have the value of j greater than from 2 1 2 sorry 2 3 4 5 up to n and again the i remains same that is 1 and 2 now the fastest way through s line number 1 line number 1 to the jth station is either if you see here this is the jth station on line number 1 the fastest way would come either from the j minus 1th station on line number 1 or it will come from the j minus 1th station on line number 2 in between we will incur some transit cost also ok so it becomes your f1 j minus 1 the time taken by the j minus 1th station on the line number 1 plus plus a1 comma the time taken by a1 comma j ok so this station will take some time this station whatever it takes time in if we sum these two values we get the total time taken by the chases to come from this particular line but if I talk about the line number 2 if the j from the j minus 1 if the chases is coming then we have to take we have to consider the time taken by the j minus j minus 1 th station on the line number 2 plus the time taken by the transit okay that becomes your t2 j minus 1 plus the time taken by the j th station on line number 1 so henceforth the equation becomes your f2 j minus 1 plus t2 j minus 1 plus a1 comma j right so this gives of our general condition that if you want to compute that on line number 1 what is the fastest time taken by the jth station then we have to take the min value between these two so whichever is giving us the minimum value between these two path will be chosen right similarly so now we come to the recursive solution uh, the definition you see f1 of j we have written the base condition here e1 plus a11 that is your entry time plus the time taken by the first station on line number 1 if j is 1 that is the first station and then for the remaining for the general class if j is greater than from 2 we have to compute the j minus 1th time taken uh, the minimum time taken by the j minus 1th station on the line number 1 or line number 2 ok similarly we can also compute the f2 of j by writing by writing the e2 ok so that is e2 is the entry time from line number 2 and a2 comma 1 that becomes your the first station on the line number 1 right and the general condition for f2j becomes your same equation but the role have been changed now where we have written f1 j minus 1 now it has become f2 j minus 1 similarly because it is reaching to first station uh, jth station on line number 1 here it is will be reaching jth station on line number 2 here it will be j minus 1th station on the line number 2 here it is f1 j minus 1 right so this is how we have computed f1 of the third step comes at computing the optimal solution if you see here uh, we are going to tabulate each and every path value and we will try to see uh, that which path is going to give us the most optimal value so we have made already a table where the station numbers you can see here they are mentioned here 1 2 3 4 5 because we are considering 5 stations uh, the f1 of j is telling you the uh, for minimum time required by stage jth station station values are written here j 1 2 3 4 5 similarly we have f2 of j which is telling the uh, jth station on line number 2 how much time it does it take so let's proceed uh, with the uh, optimal solution building the optimal solution and remember that the tabulation method requires to store the results in the increasing order of j uh, so for any value j greater than from 2 we will try to compute f1 of j minus 1 and f2 of j minus 1 and then if it is coming from the other line we have to consider the transmission or transit time also so we have to compute the value of fij in this particular table and we will follow a bottom up approach so first find the optimal solution to the sub problems means 
between every station we will try to find out the optimal value and then using these values we will build the solution to the major problem now look at the diagram if you see here uh, we have two entrance points here e1 and e2 uh, the corresponding times have been mentioned like 2 and 4 so now we are going to tabulate the values and each the sub problem is here the optimal sub problems is finding out the most optimal path uh, from line number one uh, the stations from line number one and line number two in order to minimize the time so we are going to see here so we have two options we can either enter from line number one considering the even time as two and time taken by the station number one of line number one is seven so it gives us total what's time nine time right so it comes as nine unit of time similarly if we enter from line number two e2 is four and a21 that's a time taken by the station number one of line number two takes eight unit of time so four plus eight gives us twelve right so in the first in the table the first entry would be made as nine from here and the second entry would be made 12 right now to proceed to so in these two station which one we would choose we would choose 9 because it is taking a lesser amount of time now after 9 where to proceed so we will either we can either go to the the second station or line number 1 only okay which is just immediate station to the line number 1 and we can also move to the station number 2 of line number 2 for that again we will have to compute the time required so if you see here 9 plus 9 gives you 18 on the same line so if we re remain on the same line number 1 and we uh, proceed with the line station number 2 we take totally 18 unit of time but if we switch the line from uh, 1 to 2 we get it 9 plus 2 plus 5 so that gives us 16 right so in between 16 and 15 18 and 15 16 here so 18 if we follow the same line this is telling you the line number right this number is telling you the line number so if we follow the same line then our answer is 18 so that's what is mentioned here f1 of 2 will give us 18 value on the line number 1 and if we follow the line number 2 we get the value as 16 okay so we get the we come from the line number 1 okay now with the next one when we proceed towards the third station from which line we have to choose the third uh, uh, station so again we will try to see uh, because we are already here 16 plus 6 give us 22 22 time and 16 plus 1 that is 17 16 plus 1 17 plus 3 gives us 20 so between 22 and 20 20 is the min time and we are coming from line number 2 so we will write line number 2 here and line number being on the same line gives us 22 so that is mentioned here okay so 22 is mentioned here 2 2 now in between 20 and 22 obviously we will proceed with the third station on the line number one so we will take the value as 20 now again we will try to see from for station number four whether we should proceed for line number one or line number two so we will see here that uh, if we remain on the line number 1 we get 20 plus 4 as 24 and 24 and if you see here if we come from the and obviously we it's 24 is here but if I proceed with the line number 2 I get 20 plus 1 21 plus 4 so that gives us me 25 right 25 that is 20 plus 1 and plus 4 gives me 25 so the next line is 25 so because we are coming from line number one we have mentioned the line number one here now between 24 and 25 obviously we would proceed with the 24 because it is minimum so we proceed with the station 4 on line number one if I add 24 if I remain on the same line and I add 24 to 8 I get 32 here right 
I get 20, uh, 32 here and if I change the line so I get 24 plus 3 that is 27 plus 5 32 also here but if you see 25 and if I don't change anything 25 plus 5 gives me 30 25 plus 5 gives me 30 so which is minimum 30 is minimum so I am going to consider the 31 so that's how the 30 has come here if I remain on the line number 2 only so I am reaching to the JH station or the last station of line number 1 and 2 and obviously I would proceed with the line number 1 because it is giving me uh, 32 plus 3 total time taken here is 35 and if I proceed with the line number 2 I get 30 plus 36 that gives me 36 so this is how I get the final value as 35 okay so f star becomes 35 and how we have proceeded it because we have followed the main stations from maximum stations from line number 1 it is considered as 35 we will exit from the line number 1 we will exit from line number one that's what the mentioned here okay so the fastest way uh, calculate now we can we are ready to design our algorithm so obviously the basic condition we should require first of all the computation of time required at the first station okay that will measure that will also consider the entrance time for the respective lines e1 and e2 so we are going to write that these two lines that f1 of 1 is simply the entrance time at the respective lines plus the time taken by the first station on each line so it becomes e a e1 plus a11 and for f2 of 1 it becomes e2 plus a21 now for any other station uh, where j belongs to 2 to n we have to write we have to compare the conditions that if the time taken by the j minus 1th station on the line number 1 and the time taken by the jth station on line number 1 is less than from the time taken by the j minus 1th station on line number 2 plus the transit time plus the time taken by the jth station on line number 1 then we are going to consider the min part as the time okay and in this particular case the line selected will be 1 and if it is not the case then the time required will be f2 j minus 1 plus t2 j minus 1 a1 j and the time taken by l1 of j the line will be 2 okay similarly we can also write for f2 of j minus 1 the same condition just in the reverse order l2 of j is 2 and l2 of j is equals to 1 okay so these are the uh, four line code which will compute the value of f1 j and l1 of j similarly we have other uh, five lines of code which will compute the value of f2 of j and l2 of j now to compute the uh, total time required we have to check the condition if f1 of n this is a total time required on the first line plus the exit time is less than from the total time required on using the second line plus x2 that is exit time if this is the case then f star becomes your f1 of n plus x1 okay so the time taken by uh, stations using line number one plus the exit time of line number one so uh, the value of f star becomes that and the line chosen is one but if this is not a case the f star value should be f2 of n plus x2 and the line chosen becomes two now for print stations uh, we can have a simple code where we can print the stations of whatever we have chosen the stations from which line so this is a simple line code which is telling you that for j is equals to n to 2 okay n to 2 we have to print the line i for each station j minus 1 at the station so if you see here f1 of j and f2 of j and the respective lines we have we have already mentioned in the previous table also so because here we are exiting through the line number one we are mentioning l star is one so this is all about the uh, assembly line scheduling uh, I would uh, again uh, give you a quick glimpse over the giving optimal change algorithm which is uh, 
uh, which is a classic problem and it talks about uh, for a given denomination you have to uh, and you have to uh, make out how many possible combinations of change is possible and uh, this is a very interesting problem in uh, dynamic programming so let's quickly see the problem that already we know a greedy algorithm for giving the change okay so but we know that greedy algorithm is not going to be optimal for all the denominations so the first question which comes to our mind is that okay, whether we can design an algorithm that will give the minimum number of coins as change for any given amount yes uh, answer is yes and using dynamic programming we can design an algorithm that will give the minimum number of coins so that is again the optimality right so the most optimal solution is that having the minimum number of coins for a particular change so again we have uh, uh, to face the same problem that we have to find some sub problems that might help us in solving the coin change problem uh, the idea is that the amount could vary and we have to restrict with the available coins value right so let's see if you want to compute the minimum number of coins with the value so we will assume that the value of the coins is going to be uh, v1 is greater than from v2 uh, then greater than from v3 up till v of n and in total all these coins is going to give us the value 1 ok and uh, let's call it is a problem of computing the minimum number of coins with the values for the uh, to give change for an amount uh, something where c is the, uh, uh, the total uh, the coins which are required okay so how what is the change required for the particular amount of value that is represented by c so the original problem is the 1c problem now let mij okay is denote the solution to the ij problem so mij is denoting what the minimum number of coins to make the change for amount j using the coin with the values vi v2 vi vi plus 1 up till v of n so let me take a very uh, simple example where uh, we know that uh, we are going to have the values as 10 we have the other value as 6 and the other value as 1 so we have the coins of three values that is 10 6 and 1 and uh, number of uh, table of mij values could be So we were discussing about uh, uh, getting the change and uh, let me come to the slide where uh, we have been given a few coins denomination uh, uh, is 10, 6 and 3 and the total uh, for the change we need to get the minimum number of coins for the unit 12 uh, value. So let me calculate the mij values remember that uh, j is representing the total uh, uh, value okay for which we are looking for the uh, change and i is representing the number of coins so here you can see the index values have been mentioned 1 2 3 so this is uh, nothing but uh, the index 1 is representing the 10 uh, coin uh, coin with the value 10 the index 2 is representing the coin with the value 6 and the index 3 is representing the coin with the value 1 ok so let me start with the bottom up uh, fashion and first of all if I take the all the coins of 1 ok so how this go table is going to be constructed this side we have put up the coin denominations and this side we are going to put the values for the j from 0 to 12 ok because we are looking for the denominations for the total 12 so now if I take i is equals to 3 that is a coin value with 1 for the 0 anyways we don't need anything for the 1 uh, we need at least 1 coin for the 2 value we need at least 2 coins of 1 for 3, 4, 5 similarly uh, for the with the denomination of 1 as a coin value for the 12 
total uh, change of 12 we need to, to total 12 number of coins <coughs> the next denomination is represented by 6 so here now I have to take it as 1 and 6 okay this is 1 and this is 6 so with the combination of 1 and 6 how we can achieve this value so let's look at this for 0 we don't need anything for 1 we we need only one coin that is of one value okay then uh, for the two value we need only one coin two coins for with a one one value for three we need three coins with a one one value four and similarly we'll keep on repeating till five but after five once we know that we get that we need the change for six what we have to get we have to get the only one coin that is of the denomination 6 that's how the 1 has come here now if you are looking for the denomination for 7 we need to take only two coins 1 is 6 and 1 is 1 so that gives us two value right similarly if we have to look for the uh, change denomination for 8 we need one 6 coin okay one 6 coin and the remaining two coins as one coin so we get 3 here similarly for the 9 we need 4 coins 6 plus 3 uh, coins of one denomination so that makes us 4 coin and for the 10 we need 5 for 11 we need 6 and for the 12 change we need only 2 coins of 6 6 denominations now if we have one more uh, coin value which is represented by 10 so we need to again look upon that from 0 to 5 we are still same so that's nothing change uh, from the last row to the first row uh, for the as soon as the sixth denomination come it uh, it is copied from the second line where we need only one uh, coin for the seven it is two for eight it is three for nine it is four and for the ten we need again one for eleven one ten and one one and for twelve one uh, 10 and 2 1 1 coin right so this is how we get the all the possible denominations for this now if we want to see how optimally we can get this value so we have to look upon this two number so how this two number has been achieved so this two number is coming from this value right so this two is simply copied from this number and this from this two value is coming from where for this need we need to go back to the sixth step okay in the same row so one two three four five six okay so we are going to have six steps here so it means we are going to have the one is v2 so that is six so we are going to have one coin as of denomination six right and from here if I look upon from where this one value is coming so for this it is is it coming from the down no it's not then from where it is coming for this I will have to go back to the six steps so one two three four five six so it becomes zero so it means I need not to take any other value this value is coming from the only the denomination 6 so we need to get two coins of denomination 6 in order to get the value 12 now with this we can derive our formula that how to compute it it is quite simple to see that either we are using a coin with a value vi in a solution or we are not using it right so similarly if you see here like for the 10 denomination if the denomination is going to be higher then the given change like for 8 if you see here okay so we are not going to use that particular denomination we are using a just lower de denomination but if the value is slightly higher we are using the highest denomination and plus additional number of denomination so to get it we have to use the mi plus 1 of j that is the next denomination the second uh, higher denomination for the given change if the vi value that is your the coins value is going to be greater than from the change value with this we can write our recursive formula that mij 
so mij if you see here it is going to give us the minimum number of coins to make change for the amount j with the value vi okay with the value vi is going to be a minimum between either we will pick up the next higher de uh, denomination coin in respect to the change or 1 plus the highest denomination coin okay and the j minus what is j j is the change for the change we are looking for minus the vi okay now what is vi here so what is the remaining value we are using it okay so that is otherwise so this is a dp coin change algorithm and uh, this uses the same recurrence relation that's just now we have seen that either we are going to get the change value by using the next higher de denomination for the given change or we are going to get the value by using 1 plus okay the denomination for the mi okay and then the denomination the change minus the highest denomination value so if we take the remaining of it okay that value if we can get from mi the same table we can return and we can make it so the previous algorithm allow us to find the minimum number of coins now uh, how can you modify the algorithm to actually compute the change okay so the multiplicities of cow coin remember in this particular example also we know that we have gotten the solution that we need six number of coins only but we have not come across a solution which can tell us that how many number of coins would be required so that's uh, I'm leaving up to you guys for your assignment and for your self-assessment that if you can modify this particular algorithm to know the exact number of coins required for uh, computing the change that will be great so here uh, I think I hope this uh, you would have find out this video very useful and um, if there are any questions or queries related with this particular uh, video you may post me a query on my mail id uh, shakti.mishra at the rate of um, sot.pdpu.ac.in and hopeful that uh, you all are safe and staying home without any problems and uh, please drop me a mail for any further query